This conference okay. will now be recorded. It's time. I'm Dr. Shai one of the uh, doctor covering accident and emergency today. Am I talking to Mrs. Clara, 30 years? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Uh, Clara, I can see you have pain and vomiting. Uh, let me ask my sister to give you some uh, painkillers and uh, anti-sickness medicines. Would it be okay? Uh, yeah, doctor, I took something. What's happening with me, doctor? I just uh, so uncomfortable. You already yeah, yeah. Uh, are you able to talk? Uh, yeah, doctor. I just need to understand what is happening. Mm hmm. I can understand this is your fifth day after after uh, surgery. So yes. uh, me, I know what is what exactly going on. Oh, well, uh, I had this pain, very severe pain in my tummy and I'm just generally not feeling well. And uh, I have been puking since morning and it's been nonstop, I've not eaten or drank anything. I feel very sick. I'm so sorry to hear about that. I'm going to ask my uh, my sister to give you some fluids through uh, through your vein uh, in the arm. Would that be okay? That's okay. Uh, Clara, is this my, uh, this is my first meeting, so is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions quickly to know more about yeah, sure. you? So finally, we can. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So could you tell me uh, how severe is the pain and where exactly is the pain? It's the worst pain I've had and in, in it's very low down in my tummy, but generally uh, everything feels, uh, uh, if I move also, there's a lot of pain in my tummy. Mm -hmm. So can you score the pain for me? I'd say a 10 on 10. I'm so sorry. So yeah. uh, is it localized or radiating to your legs and uh, upper tummy as well? I don't really understand all that, but it's in my, all over my tummy, especially in the like lower region. Anything which is uh, uh, decreasing the pain? You told this agra this is aggravating by movement, but anything by which it is decreasing? Did you take the medicines? No, no I I'm still the same, slightly better maybe after the nurse gave me something. All right. So uh, could you tell me more about your vomiting? Uh, I've uh, been vomiting continuously since morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So may I know uh, why you had uh, uh, the keyhole surgery? Uh, well, uh, I've been married since two years, but uh, for a year and a half, we tried for a pregnancy and that didn't happen. I had gone to my GP where uh, they told me to do some uh, tests for my tube. The x-ray they said was not, uh, you know, very conclusive. So they told me I need this diet test to be done. Uh, yeah. That's what mm -hmm. happened. I understand. And do uh, you have any medical or surgical comorbidity for which you follow your GP? Any uh, no. surgery? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your blood group? Uh, B positive. Uh, any reservations related to blood transfusion, Clara? No, not at all. Your weight and height ratio? 24. Mm -hmm. Any family history of concern which you would like to mention? No. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I believe you are not allergic to anything, right? No. Mm -hmm. So how is the support, uh, Claire, at home? Uh, I am well supported. My husband is uh, looking uh, after me. And what do you do for a living? No, I'm a homemaker. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything else which you would like to add? Um, and thank you for the information. Uh, yeah, doctor. Yeah, Clara, uh, I have checked your observation chart and mm. uh, uh, I can see you are alone today. Would you like someone to be with you? I have to discuss some information with you. No, no, you can tell me. My husband will come soon. Yeah, I have a difficult news to discuss with you, Clara. Um, yeah, tell me. Let me explain to you uh, because, uh, you know, after your history and your observation chart, which I, I just checked, can't take to this. Um, your pulse is going uh, fast, and your BP is going down, and uh, and moreover, you have a slight uh, temperature. And as you are not able to um, not able to drink or eat, so I'm suspecting uh, uh, an injury 
during your surgery. I'm suspe oh. suspecting whether this is bleeding or maybe some bowel injury. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so uh, that sounds serious, doctor. What do we do now? I mean, uh, me, I know. Uh, have you passed your urine and uh, are you able to walk around? I was able to walk around uh, till morning. Now I'm very ill. Uh, yes, I am passing urine well. All right. So uh, now this is the time to um, take the action quickly. We don't want to uh, deteriorate your uh, further uh, observations. So I'm going to involve my consultant, my uh, your pain relief doctor, uh, the OT staff again, and uh, um, we want to run a few more tests and you might need another surgery. I'm so sorry to tell you. Oh, oh. Whatever needs to be done, doctor. So um, now again, uh, there is a need of further blood test. I'm going to send, uh, um, we are arranging a portable scan to see um, and uh, to see if there is any internal bleeding and we are going to do an X-ray of your tummy to see uh, if there is any um, uh, problem with your gut. And if it is diagnosed in that case, you might need the second surgery. I'm so sorry to tell you. I have to be honest about the facts, uh, Clara. That's okay, doctor. I, I understand these things happen. I just want, wonder uh, you know, what is next. Are you feeling feverish? Uh, yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to admit you and uh, we are going to, as fluids are already given by, uh, by the sister, we are going to arrange, uh, I mean, I know, um, do you have any uh, uh, this, um, uh, you are, um, you're happy if blood is transfused? Yeah, I don't have a particular problem. I'm not particularly happy about it. Mm -hmm. So after your scan, we will be in better position to decide whether this is uh, the problem with uh, your gut or with uh, your uh, um, your womb. Is there any internal bleeding? And for that, if uh, again your uh, observations are deteriorating, and uh, we got uh, the clue after a scan then we will shift you in the theater and for which we will arrange your blood. And I have already mentioned you, we will run a few more tests and I'm going to give you some uh, uh, antibiotics as well as your uh, okay. uh, white blood cells they are also high. Okay. So, okay. Uh, are you... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, yes, let my husband will be coming and uh, we will discuss with him also. And, uh, yeah, if you if you agree, we can call your husband, and uh, because uh, we have to take the actions uh, very quickly. Sure, sure. Is it okay? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm here to take care of you, and I'm going to inform my consultant. Uh, he will be here in a bit, and take the things things forward from there after your investigations. Will it be okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Clara. Do you have any other anything questions? else? No, is there anything else I need to know? No. Uh, yeah. Um, after your investigations, I will be in better position to uh, clarify and we have to rectify uh, your problem after further investigations. Okay. And if bleeding, we are not able to control the bleeding, we will see where is the problem. If we are not able to control the bleeding, in that case, uh, uh, we might need uh, the, um, and there will be an open surgery again. Mm. All right. Great. All right. Thank you, Shasta. Ma'am, I think I have yeah. to, because I was not able to zoom and I, I, I'm really, not able to see how is the pulse, blood pressure and everything. So that was only my guess, whatever I, I was talking. But I think if this is gut injury, so we have to uh, give her conservative treatment. If her gut sounds, they are, they are okay. we are able to, I don't know exactly. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, fine. Now we'll come to the feedback. Uh, doctor, can I come in, doctor? Uh, no, we'll, uh, I think Dr. Sandhya was also looking forward to uh, like performing this one, right? Is she there? Uh, 
Dr. Sandhya, are you there? Uh, yes, Dr. Okay. Would you like to give it a go? Quickly. This you can start one. right away. Yeah. This chart, right? Sorry? Uh, yeah, this chart I cannot see. It is very... Okay. Okay. Uh, see, see, don't blame the chart, right? Uh, if you have the exam, also you'll have a similar chart. You have to program your mind how to read this chart. Okay. Understood? As somebody who is an SD5 is used to looking at these charts, you should be able to pick out what is abnormal at least. And you should know what are the components of the chart. You can't be like trying to read this in the two minutes during the exam. That's the purpose of familiarizing yourself with the Mio's chart. You have to know that there is temperature, heart rate, systolic and diastolic blood pressure on this. And secondly, you don't have to know the exact reading as well. If you can, can you make out which uh, zones the dots are in at least? You can make out, no? Yes. Right? yes. In yellow, yellow zone. No? That, that's enough for you, isn't it? Do you do you need anything more than that? Not really. If you can make out that the systolic BP is in the red, it means it's like uh, SBP is low. Your diastolic BP is obviously in the white zone, which is it is likely to be. So there is overall hypotension that you can make out. You can make out that the heart rate is in the temperature. Yeah, temperature. Temperature is high. Uh, temperature is in the yellow zone. Heart rate is in the yellow zone. That much is enough for you to, as a uh, bird's eye view of looking at a mirror chart, you should be able to pick up on these things because in the exam, if you keep looking at, okay, uh, is it like, what's the temperature exactly? It's 39 or what? So that's not really, you know, the way to look at a mirror chart. You have to train yourself into doing all these things. If you wait there for your two minutes there, you will panic, no? You understand? The same thing might happen. Secondly, so, Mayor's chart is given for this reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, now since I have told you this, would you like to give it a try? Yes. Uh, I okay. want to see first page. Yeah, first page. First page. Yes, I'll give you 30 seconds because you've read, no? Okay, can I start? Okay, uh, you are able to see the ultrasound as well, right? What it is showing? Uh, yes. Okay. Start. Hello, I am Dr. Sandhya, one of the doctor in clinic today. Am I talking to Clara Gibbs, 30 year old? Oh yes, yes, doctor. Okay, Clara, I can. Uh, I have gathered that you have vomiting and abdominal pain how are you feeling now uh, do you want something we have the nurse has given me something slightly better but you know it's overall i'm not feeling that well doctor it's just too much pain that i'm in okay clara are you comfortable to talk to me yeah doctor go ahead i really want to know what's wrong suddenly how this has happened Okay, Clara, is that okay if I just ask a few questions from you and then address all your concern and further management plan? Yeah, sure. Okay, Clara, could you tell me more about your pain? Well, uh, this pain has uh, was there since last night, but it wasn't so bad. Now it has got uh, really bad, and it's all over my tummy. It was majorly in the lower tummy, and. Uh, uh, I've been puking since morning like mad. I'm not able to eat anything. I have no appetite. feel really sick. Mm -hmm. And any associated fever? Uh, I'm feeling feverish. I think the nurse checked and uh, I did have fever. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you score the pain from 0 to 10? I would give it a 10 on 10. Okay, and could you tell me about your vomiting? How many times you have vomited? All morning. I didn't retain anything, not even water. Okay. 
and uh, apart from vomiting and pain if you have any other complaint no any difficulty in breathing no mm -hmm. clara i have gathered from your notes that you underwent a lap and diet test five days ago right mm -hmm. could you tell me more uh, could you tell me more about that well uh, yeah so um I was being worked up uh, because I was trying to conceive and uh, since one and a half year I wasn't able to I went to the GP where they told me that uh, I need a diet test the uh, first one was x-ray was inconclusive so they told me I need this test uh, to see what is the condition mm -hmm. and what about your recovery after the surgery oh, I, I was discharged the very next day I was doing all right yes okay have you uh, okay and uh, um, have you passed urine after that and opened up your bowel yes uh, i'm opening bowels normally and passing urine also and you started to eat and drink well after the surgery yes right yes okay. Okay. so this problem started just uh, from yesterday yes mm -hmm. and any pregnancy before clara no pregnancy at all. And do you have any other medical illness? No. And apart from this surgery, any other surgery in the past? No. Any allergy? No. Can I ask you a personal question if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. Have you ever diagnosed with any sexually seared infection in the past? Oh, well. Yeah, my husband doesn't really know about this, but uh, a few years back, uh, when I was with my boyfriend, I, I had a bout of uh, chlamydia, and I did take some antibiotic for that. And it was treated fully? Uh, not sure. So they had asked me to come for a recheck visit to the gum clinic, but I didn't really go there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, um, do you smoke or take alcohol? Uh, yeah, I do smoke. I don't drink or do any drugs. Mm -hmm. And are you aware of your weight to height ratio? Uh, it's 24. And your blood group? B positive. Any reservation in blood transfusion? No. What about your family support? Well supported. Okay. Thank you, Clara, for giving all this information. Anything else you want me to know? No, I just want to know what's happening. Uh, yes. Uh, Clara, do you want someone to be your side as I have to give you a lot of information? Uh, no, that's okay, doctor. Just tell me. Clara, I have your scan report as well as a blood test and your uh, vitals has also been checked. And I have confirmed with your name, age, and NHS number that this belongs to you. Okay. So in your uh, examination finding, it is showing that your pulse is going high and also your blood pressure is falling and your temperature is also raised. And Clara, in, uh, also there is sign of infection in your blood report and in your scan report, it is showing that uh, uh, some collection is there, some blood collection is there. So Clara, I'm sorry to tell you that it seems that a complication had happened during the surgery. Okay. It could yeah, yeah. be, uh, Clara, it could be either uh, injury to bowel uh, or any uh, vessel injury could be there or any uh, organ injury could be there which uh, due to which some uh, blood accumulation is seen. Or uh, also it could be a uh, uh, bladder injury. So uh, we need to, for, uh, Clara, if you allow me, can I discuss with you about the further management plan? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, as uh, it is a complication and it seems to be a, uh, 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 it is a something very serious. So I will also inform my consultant here and we, uh, we will offer you admission. Uh, will, mm -hmm. uh, it will be okay for you getting admitted? Yeah, that's okay. Whatever okay. we need. Yeah. Uh, yes, Clara. And also your further management will be done by a team of doctors, including our consultant, anesthetist, intensivist, as well as a blood doctor. 
and uh, yeah. let me tell you that after admitting you we need to do certain other investigations to check uh, for the exact um, uh, to, uh, for the exact in, uh, complication that had happened uh, I, also uh, it will be required an x-ray abdomen will be required to check if any um, and also maybe some higher imaging test as well as we will do a coagulation profile uh, profile test liver function test kidney function test okay. then uh, the things will be take uh, let me tell you that if, um, as it is likely that some injury had happened so i'm sorry to tell you that uh, you may need further uh, surgery hmm. okay okay uh, yeah yeah i'm listening tell me mm -hmm. And if uh, uh, and also regarding further surgery, it will be again a team of doctor will decide about um, and a team of doctor will be involved in that. And uh, what uh, the injury which is present, it will be repaired. Uh, 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 it will be repaired. And also the um, after uh, after surgery, uh, your admission will be slight prolonged. We will shift you to the um, HDU where further monitoring will be done in the uh, charting charting will be maintained also you will be a uh, fluid monitoring will be done and we will uh, uh, we will give you painkiller as well as antibiotic after checking allergy and uh, regarding uh, you may need further blood thinning agents which will be given after the hematologist input mm -hmm. are you following me clara yes yes doctor i'm listening so, okay do you have any query till now no. no and uh, also clara uh, as some complication had happened uh, we uh, we will also do an incident reporting to mm -hmm. see that uh, whether there is fault uh, any fault happened from our side and uh, it will be very honest and uh, transparent report will be communicated <clears throat> to you and i really ap apologize the complication that happened with you and i'm also yes. documenting everything which had happened right now i am also calling informing my consultant and i'm right here to take care of you yeah sure okay doctor uh, whatever we need i understand these things happen how how about my chances of pregnancy uh, yes, Clara, regarding further uh, pregnancy, let me tell you that uh, you can sure try for the further conception, but if you have any, as some complication had happened, so it, there is a chance of adhesions inside, and it may lead to some complication further. Uh, right now, I cannot say for sure that whether it will affect your fertility or not, but you can try for conceiving, and if any, uh, you uh, 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 if there is any difficulty in conceiving, then uh, we can do further. Uh, testing regarding that okay and also if you conceive then you have to come for early follow-up to rule mm -hmm. out uh, as there will be a slight increased chance of ectopic pregnancy that is pregnancy occurring outside the womb so uh, early follow-up is needed okay thank you thank you yes Sandhya sepsis part i think i forgot totally it, it could be some infection also all right okay uh let's uh hear from the rest uh Shaisa, is she there yes ma'am all right okay so what did you get the while doctor sandhya was doing the station Yes, ma'am. I missed a lot of things. I, I even after uh, um, this task, I realized I I forgot uh, the clinical governance part. And moreover, we have to review the notes of the patient to see um, whether any difficulty encountered during the surgery and what was the result of her diet test. Yes. Okay, that's we, one part. It's still okay. the okay. tubes are present or not. Uh, all right. Reviewed what? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're getting there. Would anyone like to? You're getting there. I'm saying. Hello. Yeah. Would anyone like to give their thoughts about what they think the DD another DD can be? What What do you think about this? Can I? Okay, listener. Uh, who's that? MacBook. Tanya. 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 Hi. hi. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, this looks like like acute salpingitis, and especially um 
she's uh-huh. saying she had chlamydia which was not treated so it could have flared up after the mm-hmm. dye test okay yeah it looks so, like and it's also coming after five days so it is exactly. reading was it got presented earlier this is presenting later yeah and her Again, uh, bowel bowel injury uh she uh but doesn't present a latent bowel injury after like uh, five days maybe the first 48 hours because it, then you will get peritonitis it doesn't come after 120 mm. hours of and she was eating passing uh, motions mm. passing urine everything was well so history has a lot of relevance yes TLC and is also raised tlc is raised tlc is raised so see um yeah so dr shayasta uh and anybody else wants to give any other dds that came to their mind uh, looking at this picture what are the things that you? Yes, Anam. Yeah. yeah. So first, for Shazia, it's good she mentioned about operative note because it may be there is education, as I mentioned, she has an BID before, or maybe she has BID before. So uh-huh. it may be during dissections or whatever, if they did for uh, during laparoscope, maybe there is a trauma to the bowel. And usually I have one case with my colleague. After five days, they get abdominal pain and vomiting. And after mm. the pain to prove to be bowel perforation, because with the cautery, especially if they use cautery, then it will be later rather than earlier presentation. So it was bowel injury. Can happen. Yeah, can happen. Can happen with the late presentation. Bowel injury, though. With cautery. Uh, yeah, it can happen. Can happen. Yes, I I understand. I agree with you. But at the same time, see, uh, when they give you a, a scenario in the exam, they don't just randomly provide you with certain information like you have to try to look for clues within the things that are provided to you so since a usg is provided to you what does it look like from this somebody has put it in the chat divya sadia as well yes okay so this is a tube yes it's the tortuous elongated inflated uh, tube with a collection. So that's what's happened. The other, hello. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm listening. Uh, yeah, okay. So the other clues that uh, come to you from this is uh, one is you, you have to look when you read this scenario, for instance, if you are able to clench the diagnosis based on the ultrasound itself, they will give it, okay, they will give you a if it's a written report that is given to you, that's again brilliant. But sometimes, uh, often they just provide the clinical uh, picture to you with the ultrasound. So here they have given you a hydro, uh, a pyosalpines, in fact, and uh, the presentation overall. Okay, <clears throat> which correlates with uh, your diagnosis of the pyosalpines. So this is a scenario wherein she, there is this woman. Who was being worked up for subfertility now try and see how many components are there in this atypical kind of a post-op station there is subfertility as a component also to be uh, addressed again in this uh, scenario then it's a post operative uh, case so you have to take your typical history with some complication that has occurred you also know for a fact that her HB is 10.5, so we wouldn't think that there is a bleed occurring inside, okay? If you had tachycardia, you had hypotension, and you had a falling HB, and a patient who was looking pale, all right? Then, yes, your mind goes more and more towards that, okay? Uh, towards a bleeding, which wouldn't suddenly, like again, come up on the fifth post-operative day and also note what kind of surgery is done. It's not uh, somewhere near the um, infant double or pelvic that you've operated like a dermoid cyst or something and a secondary hemorrhage has occurred. If you want to vaguely go in that order, think about what is more probable first, okay? TC is raised, there is fever and uh, because of the fever, there is tachycardia and there is uh, some uh, drop in your systolic BP. Okay, so you're looking towards an infection. They've given you a TC, which is high. Okay, quite high. So you're looking towards an infection. All right, so what kind of infections could you be looking at at this particular point in time? Let's see. 
One is what we have discussed to ovarian abscess, hydrosalpinx is there, divya, very good. What else? Let's see. Uh, oh, the divya is left. Shaista, anything, anything else you, you think of? Some sort of a post-operative abscess can be there. Sometimes like oh, the hematoma which had formed inside, which has gotten infected or a wound infection is there, but some sort of an infection is there. And when you uh, they have given you a corroborating ultrasound finding, then it goes very, very highly towards this particular diagnosis of a PID. Okay, is everybody in agreement? It's not, this station is not my creation, by the way. If uh, you think this, this is a vague scenario, no, it's not. Okay. All right. Okay, fine. Mm, Anna, agree? Yeah, you mean during dye encephalation when they do through the laparoscope, maybe there is something with old VID, you mean? And then mm, it's right? Yeah. So it's probably gotten triggered. Okay, so that's uh, the station that was given. Secondly, now you have to look at uh, what you need to collect in terms of information gathering and what would be um, relevant in order for you to make diagnosis in such situations. Um, one question which I find a little, uh, uh, you know, offensive is try to score the pain. I don't usually ask they, if they've already come and said that I'm in so much pain, it's severe. But it's not really something that you need to do. You're not doing a neurology class. But yes, where is the pain localized? Is it is Have you noticed anything worse in that? That's okay to ask. Are you better now? Okay. Both of you started the scenario pretty well. I would still suggest like if I were to do it personally, uh, I, I just do my basic introduction, that is, I am Dr. So-and-so, and ask about, uh, I understand, or the nurse has informed me that you are in pain, you have uh, some uh, uh, difficulty, like you're vomiting, etc. If whatever is given in the scenario, and then identity confirmation, okay? When you uh, ask about their well-being first, it always is a better uh, beginning to the station. Okay, role players are also happier with you. I can go as far as to say that uh, even their name, uh, this thing can be confirmed at a later point after you have asked this one basic question. Okay, so how are you doing? Can I get something for you? And then let me start by, is it, are you okay to talk now? Let me start by confirming that your Clara Gibbs 30 years of age, right? So then uh, she'll say yes, okay, yeah. Then proceed with the history, okay? Next, uh, you need to also look at uh, the from the history perspective. Okay, some things that Shasta again uh, were missing were the um, your in your station. Firstly, it didn't ask me basic post-operative, which was the bowel bowel opening. Okay, bladder is she passing urine adequately? What has happened after the surgery? Right, in those five days that she didn't have. She's saying that uh, since today morning or last night, this problem started. And how was she post-operatively? Was she discharged late? Okay. Was there any other problem that was told to her? And one thing that both of you didn't ask was, what was she told about the surgery? She had a lap and die, no? So immediately after lap and die, which is a diagnostic procedure, uh, she must have had a questions or a debriefing about the findings of the surgery, what was uh, found at the time of the surgery. Isn't that relevant or is it necessary if she doesn't know to go back to her uh, operative nodes and to check for what those findings were? Yes? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So yes, that would be something which uh, is again should be there constantly at the back of your mind. Somebody comes to you post-operative, even uh, the VBF station uh, that uh, it, there is a structured discussion, say uh, the most important essential uh, information gathering point in that is, uh, aren't you interested in knowing the notes? 
okay what happened what was the uh, surgery were there any uh, difficulties during that or even so if it is a laparoscopic surgery you would try, try to find out if uh, it was a recorded uh, like surgery and try to uh, look for as a potential of any injury and things like that so in this again the same things become relevant and uh, so you go back into asking the current complaints of the pain vomiting okay since when is the vomiting how many times vomiting anything retained pain where is the pain uh, localized okay and uh, why would it radiate i mean what was the concept of it radiating down the leg or i don't really understand that and radiation is a term which not usually used in a typical lay conversation it's a medical terminology you can say that uh, uh, does it is there a uh, pain just in your tummy or somewhere else as well that's okay but again when she's particularly complaining of tummy pain tummy pain tummy pain you can ask where in the tummy and um, yeah so on so forth as i have mentioned then uh, have you been feeling uh, feverish okay you've noted that there was fever discharge from down below okay because one thing we are enter entering with certainty in this station is that there is infection somewhere all right so there may be uh, these potential areas of infection and you need to ask for vaginal discharge wound related problem okay and uh, i understand you were operated 5 days ago so uh, how were you after the surgery was anything informed to you about the operation or immediately after the operation about any uh, issues or complications faced what were the uh, what was told to you about the findings okay uh, were you able to uh, move your bowels uh, were you able to pass urine was there any fever in these days that she mentioned she was discharged on the very next day she was also told that the findings were pretty much normal okay the tubes that they found were normal they looked normal that was discussed with her by the uh, surgeon all right and if uh, she is moving about leg swelling these are uh, typical your post operative template questions okay then you go to events preceding the surgery which again she tells you when uh, you ask the open question so why was the lap and die done if she hasn't told you this and any other uh, abnormal tests which were there okay uh, then uh previous medical surgical allergies support that everybody uh, both of you asked me sti dr sandhya very good that you elicited this particular thing and that she was not completely treated for it but then you didn't run with this uh, particular uh, narrative and you kind of like forgot about it or got mixed up somewhere in the middle of the station okay sandhya are you there yes dr roma yes yeah in management part i forget about that yeah now again the thing is that there was past sti and uh, whenever there is any sti okay and they, they will put it in nice red uh, bold things that patient safety is follow up with this do other sti screens sent to gum clinic that has to be done right especially in this woman who hasn't had uh sort of any other uh, follow up with the gum clinic she was just had that one swab and took some antibiotic and didn't really follow up so this is something very important catchy then again uh, i added another one which wasn't there really in the original uh, station which was smoking uh, which added to the complexity of the station but that's my bad it uh, it wasn't there in the original uh, script which was there all right now reservations uh, for transfusion bmi uh, personal or family history of clots and past any pregnancies uh, and what about your other fertility uh, tests that were done by the gp yours and your partners was everything normal and is he otherwise fit and well okay so you have to understand that it's overall the patient that you're treating you can't look at a station as this is post op and i'll do it like a post op case alone there are other issues that the patient also has right okay now once we're done with this information would anyone like to add anything or ask any questions at this point of time 
you are right, doctor, it may be one differential diagnosis. She has a chronic BID, but and maybe not to treat it. Uh, shall we do, I mean, um, high vaginal swab, not test for gonorrhea and chlamydia, and other sexual before we do laparoscope dye insufflation? I think yeah, you're getting, exactly, exactly. What well, thing is in this, in this station is that that was not done. In fact, okay, in fact, uh, if, a woman has a past history of chlamydia and hasn't completed follow-up, hasn't completed uh, the completion of treatment, hasn't been done at the cum clinic. Before you do the even the hysterosalpingogram, which she has undergone, you would like to take swabs, wouldn't you? Yeah. As you just mentioned. Yeah. Yes, you would. So was that done? It was not done. So that comes for investigation, isn't it? Yeah. So that's something that you have to point out and be honest and open about that. And that's called as duty of candor. Yeah. So those, those are the agendas which particularly are being tested in this particular scenario is that uh, uh, there are things that should have been evaluated in this patient, which again got may have gotten skipped because of which she has developed a complication, which uh, has uh, like the uh, the flaring of this um, infection, flaring of the infection, which has happened in the tube and has caused acute PID. Uh, you can't call it chronic PID what she had uh, in the past. If you know about uh, chlamydia, uh, usually it can just sit in the tubes and they may even be uh, appearing normal on uh, the laparoscopy and they can even, you know, have the, the patency tube positive, but they may still make the tubes very inefficient in terms of transporting the uh, egg and sperm, okay? And because they, they affect the fimbria, if you know, right? So because of that, um, chlamydia can just sit there and not be detected without a swab in such situations when it's incompletely treated, especially. Okay? Yeah, it could be so, yeah, you are right. It could be asymptomatic and also uh, damage the inner side of the tube. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now what has happened is if you do an intervention with a, uh, like a latent uh, infection, which is there, you can cause it to flare up and which precisely may have happened in this case. The other differentials are, of course, you have to talk about uh, there is a possibility that there is some infection like a clot, which is deep down, which has got infected or uh, sepsis. OK, properly. And she's probably going to go in sepsis if you don't do something about this situation right now. OK, so uh, you have to talk about all of these in her management. And of course, you can you can drop in the idea that there may be some injury, but I don't think bleeding is a differential here at all. OK, it doesn't doesn't uh, go along with all the things which are provided to you. Hmm? Now, let's see. So majorly, what are we looking at? We are looking at sepsis from an unknown source of infection, intra-abdominal, ultra collection, which has gotten infected. We are looking at PID, and or we are looking at uh, a bowel uh, injury with some sort of an infection. Okay. Uh, communication with patients and relatives is in general. Uh, you have to be empathetic, non-judgmental, non-paternalistic. Okay. Use of your lay language, body language, tested. Uh, check for her understanding intermittently chunking of information. Okay, all of this will be tested. <clears throat> I have a question. If we have yeah. in two cases, it is BID flare up or it is bowel trauma and the ultrasound is inconclusive in such condition, shall we go for MRI or CT scan? CT preferably. But see, uh, that's not the, the point of uh, stations which is uh, test which are testing here in this situation yes you, you know there is no doubt about it right there is already a, an a usg which is showing you the inflamed uh, tube with septations and collection yeah mm -hmm. so in this station i'm not talking uh, uh, in terms of the other differentials that would i would have used as a, as a 
one liner like we would also like to check for these things as potential complication but uh, i wouldn't emphasize on it so much if i were to counsel this patient i would have uh, gone directly to uh, mentioning about how we manage the infection now and the fact that there is an inflamed tube so it most likely suggests uh, that there is uh, this particular tubal uh, infection which has occurred and uh, that is the source of uh, the fever and her pulse rate being high and also the blood pressure coming down so there is a component of uh, sepsis that we are looking at at this particular point of time okay now can someone tell me what the management will be in what is the easiest way to remember or make sure that you as a student are mentioning all the points in managing acute emergencies and we have talked about this multiple times so i'm i'm expecting that at least one of you will be able to tell me that how do you strategize in your mind the answer hello ma'am hello ma'am hello Hello. Hello. Yeah. Clear that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was my bad. I was fidgeting with things. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Lakshmi was saying something. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Sepsis six bundle, ma'am. Sorry. Sepsis six bundle, ma'am. Okay. Okay, what else? And uh, uh, like a resuscitation, admission, and uh, ABC, ma'am, airway breathing circulation. Airway breathing circulation. She's talking to you, no, my dear. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, yes. yeah. So securing IV think, lines and uh, uh, correct. So you're going to think uh, how are you going to do the management. So in a SD, you will be answering it that way, right? will be telling that these are the things i will do same way you uh, structure that in your mind but you're telling our role players so you are going to say uh, about communication investigations resuscitation and ongoing management in that particular order remember this 
that uh, we do this whenever there is an emergent situation. If some other post operative like a VVF has come to you, I wouldn't suggest to take it in the same manner. But when you're looking at a post operative emergency, yes, you will do that. Okay, so there are a lot of patient safety issues in this uh, particular scenario as well. Uh, apart from how you will go on about management right now. So you have to talk about acute management, which you have to uh, it tell in terms of the PID because you already have a diagnosis. You have to talk about that management and then you have to go uh, even talk about the long term issues that have been identified in this scenario. So um, makes an appropriate diagnosis in, in patient safety in applied clinical. So there is fever, tachycardia, hypotension, USG with uh, fluid in the tubes. So you need to tell her that, of course, uh, like a breaking bad news, but no need to like, emphasize on the template so much. You can say that I have some concerning news. Would you want somebody to be here with you? Or may I proceed? And then go ahead, tell her that uh, we could think that there is some sort of an infection here. Uh, majorly, I uh, suggest that there is a possibility. It is infection in your fallopian tubes, these uh, which connect the uh, ovaries to your womb, okay? Uh, because on your scan, it shows that there is fluid collection within as well, and your total count uh, is also high. Also, your uh, pulse is high, blood pressure is dipping, all right? And you have a fever. So. But there are some other possibilities which also we would like to rule out like an injury to the bowel or uh, any infection anywhere else in the tummy. Tummy, why? Because you're majorly looking at that area. The pain is localized to the site of the infection usually. So we are looking in general terms there. Here you wouldn't talk about lung infection and things like that, which would be completely vague, right? So as a diagnostician, you have to think about what is the most likely possibility and talk about that, okay? So I would like to examine you in the presence of a uh, chaperone, okay? Uh, do, what are you going to look for if this were a structured discussion is guarding, rigidity, to check from down below, okay, as well, okay? So I like to check the dummy and I would like to check uh, from below to see if there is any discharge all right, any mass, ponential tenderness, you want to look for all of these things hmm? to corroborate with your uh, diagnosis. Wouldn't you, uh, Shasta? Uh, Ma'am, in view of uh, online exam, uh, is, this is SPT, so uh, I skipped that part. This is not your own. <laughs> Suppose you had this in face-to-face uh, -face then. Yeah, in that case, we right. have to do it. Yeah. See, you don't look at patient as like this role player as an exam person, okay? Always think what you would have done if this case had to come to you in, in your hospital, if such a scenario you were seen with, would you not like to examine? Would you not like to see what it is that is infected, correct? You do all these things. Practically, I'm telling you, you all are good doctors and you would do these basic things just that when it comes to you in this format you don't end up saying it that's the only issue okay so confirm with the contrast uh, ct if uh, required and we would also like to do uh, kidney liver function tests crp okay your urine for examination and clotting parameters and swabs from down below take blood for cultures and lactate levels as well. So I've grouped all the blood and the tests together as part of ongoing investigation. But you need to explain to her that this is an emergency situation. So I would like to inform my consultant and after communicating with him whether we need to inform other specialists like uh, the intensivists, anesthesia doctors, microbiologists as well, and uh, possibly surgeons if we suspect some other uh, diagnosis like an injury and uh, in terms of investigation we have already i've told you what you need to say so delegate the tasks don't say that i will do this and i will pass an iv line i will pass catheter i will do this 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 no here as well you're going to say i will ask my nurse to pass a large bore iv line right now in terms of resuscitation what do you need to do 
urgently pass an IV line for you and to pass uh, to, to give you some uh, warm uh, fluids to maintain the blood pressure and ongoing okay give you some antipyretics okay and uh, start you on antibiotics after taking the blood for culture here what are we doing we are basically following sepsis 6 protocol okay and we always say to mention this okay it is not really required for a patient to know that this is sepsis 6 protocol in general but in an exam scenario it is preferable you say this for the benefit of the examiner okay okay don't say i'll follow sepsis 6 protocol and stop at that all right what we call we'll activate something we call as sepsis 6 protocol wherein we uh, will uh, be monitoring you and passing IV line uh, and I sorry IV fluids and sodium oxygen and three ins and three outs. Okay, what are the three ins and three outs? Mm, Chaista? Yes, no, I'm yes, repeating the same name. IV fluids, oxygen, hmm. and out uh, urine output catheterization. What is the third? What third in? Antibiotic. Oxygen, antibiotics. Antibiotic. Antibiotic. Hmm. Hmm. And urine output and lactate. Urine and? output, serum lactate, and hmm. uh, blood for culture and sensitivity before IV fluids. Okay. It's not just blood culture, it's all the cultures, like uh, whatever you need uh, pertaining to the scenario or the source of infection. Okay. Blood culture plus or minus other things. Okay. So that's. Hmm. Three and three hours. That's uh, was our mnemonic for remembering that. All right. Uh, then, okay. I will have to immediately make an admission for you in the intensive care unit. Where intensive care unit? It's important not to just know where you go, where you will imagine that you will do this, but you have to say it out loud to the patient to get marks. Okay. You won't get marks if you just know stuff and don't say them. All right, so ongoing management, admission to the intensive care unit while uh, we start broad spectrum antibiotics. I can spare you for not mentioning the antibiotics since it's a SPT. If it were uh, a structured discussion, I would say you have to know as per the talk which is there on TOMAS. Okay, I'll share that antibiotics once again. I think my screen has paused now. Okay, so either IVO floxacin 400 milligram twice a day okay plus metro metronidazole 500 milligram thrice a day or clindamycin 900 milligrams thrice a day plus gentamicin okay or IV cefoxetine 2 grams thrice a day with or without uh, with uh, either per oral or IV doxycycline hmm? and of course lastly ciprofloxacin that is rarely used on protocol which is there for the acute BID hmm? so also this flowchart kind of shows you what the talk said about the acute management so you first will begin the signs of systemic sepsis are there yes so high flow oxygen follow the sepsis 6 protocol and with this antibiotic you watch for improvement within 24 hours if yes then you go towards the monitoring Okay, and the uh, daily senior review continue the IV antibiotics and daily um, full blood counts, CRP levels, and four hourly observation. All right. So, <clears throat> next uh, we are going to, um, yeah, so the, if the antibiotics work, so now what else will you tell the patient? It's not this place. What else do you have to tell the patient? Ma'am, if her observations are improved with antibiotics within two days, uh, hmm. then... Uh, uh, 24 hours. Uh, 24 hours as per talk, not two days. 24 hours. 24 to 48. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If her observations are not improved, then uh, uh, she might need uh, other surgery in the form of leprotomy to mm -hmm. drain. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. What else? What one thing Dr. Sandhya mentioned is your hospital stay here will be prolonged. And then you all obviously have the clinical governance issues as well. 
okay so uh, you're going to say that since this is a operative complication also uh, i need to mention to you that uh, since you had an infection or a sexually transmitted infection in the past um, the infection should have been ruled out before doing any sort of uh, intervention as well this is duty of candor don't think that you're telling on your colleague and things like that you have to talk about both acts of commission as well as acts of omission so if somebody has uh, thrombosis and hasn't been given prophylaxis when it was deserved it's your job to communicate this to to the patient patient may not ask you in every station so you have to talk about it follow the duty of candor and do a detics about this thing any which way this case would have been for a detics because it's a post operatively uh, complication okay so yeah this <coughs> your sepsis six right if the antibiotics do work then we will uh, resolve with will work with the resolution and it will be monitored okay we do the uh, crp uh, level uh, daily uh, and white blood counts daily hmm? and we'll review uh, by a senior clinician at least twice for the for uh, every 24 hours initially till she is very much improved and come out of the situation this is all as per the talk okay so we'll talk about all these things uh, if not then a uh, complication may be there like an infection and we cannot wait for such as an abscess it can be spreading sepsis this can be unfortunately and i'm not trying to scare you by saying all these things can be sepsis these can be life threatening infections so we might have to operate in order to remove the focus of infection okay altogether all right however if we do consider improvement is there then um Uh, you will be monitored and so on and so forth you might require a longer bit of admission we'll have to consider starting you on blood thinners again tog mentions this if surgery is not imminent okay you will talk, have a talk with your consultant and with the hematologist okay intensivist etc and consider woman for vt prophylaxis okay if this issue is resolved as well i do know that you were trying to conceive okay i do know that you were trying to conceive and uh, would you like to discuss about that right now so you are asking permission because it's a long term issue and you don't want to bring it up in a manner that you know uh, try to make it unpleasant for her or she might say i don't want to discuss fertility right now given the situation that she is in so you ask for permission to proceed when you do that all right uh in that in dr sandhya's case for instance that i waited 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 and i kind of like brought it up later as a leading question if role player has to ask you this question you lose marks okay all right so counseling regarding future fertility yes dr susan so in the long run uh there is a possibility uh, that since the tubes are inflamed and infected there can be adhesions okay which will make it difficult for uh, you to conceive in the future okay also uh, so we will have to see that at that point of time after resolution uh and uh, there is if you do conceive as well if you miss periods then you have to come for an early follow up if the upd is positive uh because there is chance that it can be a pregnancy in the tube uh please do not worry in the long run if you do if you are not able to conceive for these reasons then we have options like going ahead for a test tube baby okay or surrogacy adoption as well all right you do remember woman's major concern before she came to you was sub fertility okay so for that reason you can mention uh onwards we would have to follow you up at the gum clinic as well and i would send uh, all your uh, viral markers and uh, uh, swabs as well you that you have spoken about for any other sexually transmitted infections as well okay major 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 safety point here and uh, we know this can be distressing so onwards after discharge we can refer to some support groups and counselors as well and let me give you some uh, the admission and 
uh, some written information about what we have discussed. I will document everything in your notes right now, inform my consultant and we will proceed. Okay. All right. So yes, that is it. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, hi, ma'am. Um, hello. Yes. Tell me. Huh, ma'am, would we consider infective hematoma considering her HP has not dropped at all? Uh, or do we need to actually have a pre, um, get to know what her HP preoperatively and then we compare it and then we can comment on infective hematoma because a hematoma See, would uh, lead to a drop in the hemoglobin for the patient? Um, yeah, you can consider that. But here the thing is that you don't know her preoperative hemoglobin. Yeah, that's the whole you thing. So, ask, yeah, you can ask about it and then say mm -hmm. it's 10.5. It's on the cusp. It is not 13. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's so we can thing. say it could be an infective hematoma, but for that I do need to check your uh, preoperative notes and uh, get to know if you had a fall in your uh, hemoglobin levels or not. Mm, yeah, you can say that, but since see here diagnosis is given to you already. This wasn't a situation where you had to, you know, really dig for it. You could mention differentials in the passing kind of, but you have to talk about management of uh, her condition, which is already like kind of provided to you here. Every post-op station will not have the same like kind of, you can either have this or that. So su suppose I give you somebody whose CT scan is showing that there is uh, extra vision of urine near the ureteric region. Why would you talk to her about bowel injury in that scenario? Yes, yes. You can say about other things. Here we have given you a sure short diagnosis. This station, if you talk with differential either this or that or that, you'll never finish this station because uh, it's a long station with a lot of other things. Okay. That's why they have given you the diagnosis. Okay. Understood. Uh, coverage is just enough for uh, uh, nine and a half minutes you can do this station but with all these safety points etc you have to talk about her diagnosis and her management not vague things also otherwise if the ultrasound is not provided to you yes you man uh, mention that there is an infected hematoma is a possibility that way if you're going further sepsis for any reason is a possibility in in her situation okay any intra-abdominal sepsis most likely it dropped down so sepsis so it's, it's likely okay so yeah all right any other question okay all righty Okay, guys. Um, yeah, anyone has any other questions? I see a lot of people there. So, uh, so ma'am, uh, this is a case of sepsis, uh, either because of uh, um, a flare-up of salpingitis or even uh, gut injury, or even if this is a pelvic hematoma. So, we have to cover sepsis six bundle, right, ma'am? No, this is a, a PID. This is an acute PID. Okay. Acute PID with sepsis. Okay, so you have to talk about sepsis 6 protocol and management of the PID. Right, ma'am. Because yeah. history is suggestive. Okay. History, Mom, ultrasound, uh, ultrasound is there for you. Yeah. It could be hematoma because uh, ultrasound shows collection, collection of blood. Tube, tube. It's not, it's not blood, no. This is the dilated salpings here. Okay, ma'am. Right with the locules. That's why it is. Okay, right, ma'am. Okay, yeah. Ma'am, how do you counsel this patient about PID and all of it? Like, what exact words do we use? Um, just like a. Uh, how would you say? I mentioned it, no, just now. Like yes, uh, but um, when we actually convey to the patient that this is the reason, mm -hmm. so. That's that's the only thing I felt. 
Uh, like uh, if I if it's me, I think I'll I'll go with um, since you had a past history of this infection, there's always a chance that no no uh, no. no no don't that uh, when you begin that way, okay. Uh, it's like you are bringing into the fact that you know you had an ST and that's the reason. Okay. So it's not you cannot phrase it that way because it uh, sounds like you're blaming her or she might you know take it that way or the lab examiner might take it negatively. So okay. you have to tell her that this is what has occurred. Firstly, tell her what has occurred, right? So from mm -hmm. your uh, investigations and your chart right now, we are able to make out that your pulse is quite high. You have fever, you have uh, raised counts as well. And your ultrasound shows that the um, tube, uh, fallopian tube, which is connecting the womb to the ovaries is quite in, uh, it's dilated and it's collecting uh, with some fluid inside it which likely okay. indicates the most probable uh, thing is that there is an infection in the tube okay okay uh, which has occurred okay. all right that can also be sometimes a possibility of a pus collection uh, inside uh, the tube but there is definitely some infection and uh, for these reasons we have to there may be other possibilities as well we would like to rule out by doing further tests all right but it is most likely this so this is considered as a serious possibility. And then you explain what can happen, like prognosis as well. Like when Ma'am, if she asks such a thing, uh, if she asks it, why why was there an infection in the tubes? What yeah. exactly I, I, I'm I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. <laughs> so so next uh, you are gonna have to also tell her that the seriousness of the issue. Okay. okay. You we consider this as an emergent situation and look at it very seriously because this infection, if not treated urgently, can uh, spread through your bloodstream or to other organs and give rise to life-threatening complications, which we can refer to as sepsis. So we'll have to do this on an urgent basis and manage it, blah, 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 blah. So then you are going to talk about all the four things that we spoke in emergency okay. management and involve this one, that one do all those things. Uh, then she asks you, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Vaya, Okay, you can say that is not always a reason as to why. When you don't want to blame someone, okay, there may okay. not always be a reason as to why. It has to be the first uh, statement followed okay. by. However, in your case, there was a risk factor, which is possible that in uh, the past that you had a sexually transmitted infection. And often times when we do operate in incompletely treated infection, it can spread to the tube and it can flare up and such mm. a complication can occur. Okay, ma'am. Huh? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay. Good discussion. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. A wonderful session. You explained very nicely. Thank you. Thanks, Sandhya.